Hey, Tova, Asa. That was delayed. Uh, you weren't at the other one. It's about 20 seconds delayed, Dr. Connor. Okay. Charlie, you were, make, Charlie you were making me nervous. Sorry about that, Dr. Kenner. <laughs> you know I don't like to be nervous. <laughs> okay, Charlie, can you do your um, count of the students to make sure all the presenters are here, please? Sorry about that, Dr. We're just waiting on one. Okay. So I'm gonna have you on mute just because of the echo. Okay, it, it is five o'clock. We wanna wait one more minute. And Charlie, if that other presenter is not here, we got to keep it rolling and give that to someone else to do, okay. or text that person and tell them we're ready to go. Yep, she's presenting last, so she should be here. Okay. Okay, Charlie. Here she is. All right, we are ready to go. Did I share my screen? Well, I, I think the welcome is first, but go ahead. The welcome is first. Here, Nia, do you want to start us off? Sure. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Remote Learning Town Hall. My name is Nia Lambert, and I am a senior here at Whitney Young. Tonight we'll be discussing the new schedule and protocol for remote learning. So this information has been compiled together between the administration and students. And this evening you'll be hearing from students from the remote learning committee headed by Charlie Calkins. So this committee was formed in July to incorporate student voice into the reopening process. And we have met regularly to provide recommendations and feedback to administration, along with teachers who suggested and reviewed community guidelines. Everyone involved in this process has put a lot of time making sure that this new way of learning is safe and efficient. If you have any questions during this presentation, there will be a Q&A at the end where you can submit questions and they will be answered by administration. Before we go into the bulk of our information, I would like to introduce our lovely principal, Dr. Kenner, who has put in countless hours making sure our Whitney Young community is supported during this time. Thank you, Nia. And I just want to start off by saying thank you to the 20 students who are, have been on this committee, and they have been working very, very hard to address our remote learning issues. This committee will also be a part of uh, some other issues that we might be confronted with as a school as we move forward. Um, I heard the students loud and clear when they said they wanted a voice, and I thought with the remote learning, we could start with them having a voice. So today, students will be presenting the remote learning um, uh, proposal that we have in front of everyone. And as our school community, you are certainly able to answer and ask questions. 
I want to thank the administrative team, especially Mr. Swanson, Mr. Soto, and Mr. Harris for their contribution. And I also want to thank the faculty members. We spent uh, close to three hours trying to make sure this is what our school community wanted and, and could benefit our students. And then we had nine teachers who took an extra day for us to try to craft some language in terms of student and faculty expectations. So I'm just real excited about this presentation this evening. I hope that you will be too. We believe that our remote learning is gonna be the best ever and our students will present that information. Charlie, oh, let me just introduce Charlie Calkins just very quickly. Um, there, there were two students that, well, there was more than two, but it was two students who reached out to me about the remote learning and one was Charlie Calkins. And he just emailed me and said, Dr. Kenner, uh, what are we gonna do about remote learning? He had some questions. So I was able to talk with him over the phone at school and we suggested that maybe we should form a committee of students. So I told him that I had a couple of names of students that I thought would be good for this discussion. He too had a couple of names. We merged that list together and this is what is the outcome of it. Charlie, you are beneficial to our school, could not do this without you. Um, me working with you as your principal to student has really, really been rewarding. So thank you so much, Charlie, uh, as the chairperson of this committee. So with that said, Charlie, I'm gonna give it to you to continue. So my name is Charles Calkins. Uh, I'm a junior, I guess, starting next week, of course. Um, and this year, remote learning is going to look a little bit different uh, than it did in the spring. We're going to be keeping our orange and blue days, uh, but but we're going to be adding a third day, which is called a dolphin day. So we're going to keep our block classes orange and blue. Or on orange days, we'll have periods one through four. And then on blue days, periods five through six. Each class will be meeting for 75 minutes. And of those 75 minutes, at least 60 of them will be live instruction. Each day, there'll be a 30 minute break. Uh, so everyone can have a meal, have a break. And in between each class period, there's gonna be a 15 minute passing period um, to allow students and teachers alike to get off their computers for a little while um, and, and to take a break uh, from staring at a computer screen. At the end of orange and blue days, there's going to be flex time, uh, which could be used for asynchronous learning, tutoring, small group instruction, clubs. Uh, it, it's just flexible. That's hence the name flex time. Um, and students program lunch period uh, will also be used for independent learning. Our third, our new day, Dolphin Days, um, that'll generally take place on Wednesdays. Uh, are different because on Dolphin Days, all eight periods will be meeting. Each class on Dolphin Days will be meeting for 35 minutes, um, and at least 28 of those minutes will be live instruction, uh, as well as advisory will be meeting. Um, and then at the end of those days, there'll be 20 minutes of flex time uh, and five minute passing periods. And for a meal or break that day, students will be able to use their programmed lunchtime. So different. We're going to talk about it a little bit later, but different than in the spring, students attend, student attendance is required each period and every day um, as required by CPS. So what will a five day week look like? On Monday, we'll have our orange days. On Tuesdays, a blue day. On Wednesdays, a dolphin day. And then on Thursday and Friday, we'll go back to an orange day and a blue day. It's set up this way so that each class period um, is, able, is able to meet three times a week. In the spring, since instead of a dolphin day, we just rotated between orange and blue day, that meant some classes would be two times a week, others three times a week. Um, so it allowed, this allows for all classes to meet the same amount of times a week. In a four day week, there'll be no dolphin day, just orange, blue, orange, blue. A three day week, an orange day, a blue day, and then a dolphin day. Finally, two-day week, we'll have just an orange day and a blue day. I'll now be passing it off to Margot Cicero to continue the presentation. Hello, Dolphins and Whitney Young community. My name is Margot Cicero, and I am a junior. 
Um, when creating the guidelines for this fall's remote learning plan, teachers and faculty turn to the four pillars of Whitney Young. Normally, in the normal school year, at the beginning of the year, 7th through 12th graders would all participate in activities utilizing these pillars. Now online, though, integrating these four core values is as pertinent as ever. Without further ado, let's get to those rules. The first pillar, respect. On the left side, we see the components and examples of acting with respect. Uh, I would like to highlight two of these that stand out for online learning. Listening and understanding is a very important component because as we communicate and learn and speak through a computer screen, it's important that we listen and understand each other. There's a saying that goes step up and step back. That means step up where you speak up, you speak your mind, you ask questions, you participate, um, you, you speak your opinion. And then step back, meaning you let other students um, chime in with their questions um, so we can create a more collaborative and similar to uh, in the classroom style of learning. The second, the second key is valuing the process. Now, online learning is not um, equal to classroom learning, but if we value the process and trust the process by continuing to ask questions, maintaining that focus, continuing the grind, that can be the key to really trying to um, have the same, the same learning environment at Whitney Young. Now on the right side are our community expectations of all fac uh, faculty and staff, teachers and students who are all being held to the same community standards and expectations. Number one, we will be respectful and supportive of one another. Two, we will use the media platforms respectfully and responsibly. Three, we will address for remote learning as we would dress for in-person learning. <laughs> this means, you know, no, no uh, pajamas or you, know, you have to wear pants. So we're, we're gonna show up as professionals and as students of Whitney Young. Um, number five, we will think before we type into the chat. This is similar to the saying of think before you speak and said think before we type in the chat. Meaning, you know, am I typing this chat? Is this distracting other students from the teachers presenting? Or is this gonna, you know, is this gonna help further our learning and our education in that class? Uh, number, number five, this is number five. We will promptly respond to emails. Because in class, in regular in person, um, students are able to ask questions um, in class, after class, before class with their teachers. Um, they're able to communicate at lunch or after school. Um, now that we're in, uh, now that we're online, email is the most useful resource that we can use to have that um, open communication between teachers and students. And using this and responding promptly and being um, proficient and professional would be very key to the success of this system. And number six, teachers will give frequent feedback, update grades regularly, and solicit feedback from students about their online learning. For our second pillar, oh, I'm sorry. And lastly, we want to really emphasize and highlight the golden rule during this time of treat others as you would want to be treated. Um, the second pillar of integrity. Now again, on the left are the key components under this umbrella term. And one we like to highlight is accountability. Accountability, you know, this means accountability in your homework. You're not cheating on, on the online tests that we have the internet. Um, accountability and putting your best foot forward, doing your best work that you can. Um, and really, you know, because we're online, accountability matters. You don't have you know, teachers hounding you for something in class. You don't have, um, you know, friends to rely on um, socially where you can, like, actually, like, talk to each other, like, right that second. So it's really important that accountability, that we as students and teachers um, and faculty are all accountable for our actions and what we say. And on the right side, our expectations for 
Um, integrity in our school is number one, we will maintain academic integrity and complete our own work honestly, accurately, and to the best of our ability. Number two, we will have our cameras on during class. And the asterisk is please communicate with your teacher if there's any reason why your camera is off, if it's technology reasons, if there's something you know going on. Um, and the reason why we all want cameras on is because we really want to uh, ha simulate that uh, in-person learning as close as possible and having and seeing each other's faces, um, other students' faces, the teachers' faces, it really helps with that collaboration, that accepting environment um, for, for learning. And number three, we will tend and be engaged in all class periods. This is also very important and engage is the um, you know, key word here because you can attend um, you know, all your classes or you can attend a class and like be on your phone the whole time, right? But being engaged, being participatory, being attentive is really important to um, the furthering of the class and um, helping you know, learning the learning environment as a whole. And lastly, standard grading practice this will be so unlike the third quarter or the fourth quarter well, the third quarter the spring um, you know bad grades can affect your overall letter grade so really going back to that accountability of putting your best work um, and really trying your best that's really important um, especially now that standard grading is back and now for the last two pillars Leilani I pass it to Leilani Hi everyone, my name is Leilani Linton Williamson and I'm a senior this year. I will be going over the last two pillars and starting with resilience. I would really like to highlight how important resili resilience is during this time. We're going through this whole pandemic and we're at home, we're staring at a screen all day, you're gonna get tired, your eyes are gonna hurt, you're gonna wanna get up and move around, but it's very important that we are resilient during this time. So as Margo said on the left side, these are the key components. You have to think of learning as a process and allow yourself to learn. And you have to take these challenges that we're facing and use them as an opportunity for growth and see what you can learn from them. And one very important quote that I would like to go over, it says, you are not judged on how many times you fail, but how many times you succeed. And how many times you succeed is directly related to how many times you fail and keep on trying. Some expectations we have are next. And what we want to do, we want to ask for help when we need it. Communication is a very important part of this time. You're going to have to email your teachers. You're going to have to talk with your classmates and make sure you stay on top of things. We're going to be proactive in communicating, and we're going to take advantage of additional support structures. So this comes in when you're talking about writing center, your math center, your counselors. If you need tutoring, we'll have student led tutoring from NHS and student council, which we'll go over later. But all these things are a big part of being resilient and upholding this pillar. We will take active responsibility for our own learning. And that's all, that's what resilience is all about, as well as integrity. Empathy. It's very important to be empathetic during this time. Everybody's going to have struggles, whether they be with technology or even just staying focused. We want to make sure that we are conscious of how we treat others and also how we treat ourselves. So we're going to talk about social emotional well-being. It's very important. You have to make sure that you're socially and emotionally healthy, using compassion and moral strength to speak honestly and truthfully, and holding ourselves accountable for the words we speak. As Margot previously mentioned, this can be like when you're talking in the chat, you need to think before you type something in the chat. Just remember what you say and how you say it and how it can be interpreted. Some expectations for this pillar are checking in with one another. How are you? How are you doing? Do you need help? Checking in with your teachers, making sure you're on task. Setting a selfie profile picture for our CPS account. This is something that is needed from our teachers simply because we're going into a new year, we're having new faces and new teachers. So we want to make sure that our teachers can put a face to the name. So just when you have your icon or whatever, when you do your email, it'll show your face. So just upload a selfie, something that shows who you are and it'll tie you with your name. Creating a space for all voices. We want everyone to feel like they can address their concerns to speak up, whether that be to a teacher, to one another. We want to talk about how we feel and we want to be straightforward. 
teachers will be accommodating with extenuating circumstances. As Marco Pippoli said, even if it's like having your camera off, teachers will, as long as you inform them and you communicate and let them know what the situation is, they will accommodate for that. We will respectfully support each other's mental health during remote learning, both in class and out. This is so important. We already know how important mental health is, and it's very important that we take care of each other and ourselves during this time and just be mindful of everybody and how they make it. Like I said, student social emo emotional well-being is essential for learning and important to us all. And now I'll be passing it to Isaiah Young, who will be talking about sports and clubs. Hello, I am Isaiah Young, a senior at Whitney Young, and next up, I will be talking about a very important, a very important part in your student's life, and that is what your student does after school with sports and clubs. As for sports this fall, IHSA and CPS have allowed for low-risk sports to practice and compete. Some of these sports include cross-country, high school and academic center, girls golf, 16 and softball, and girls swimming. During this time and time after, Whitney Young students and coaches have and will always follow the guidelines to make sure everyone is safe during this time. As for future sports in the winter and spring, you all can check all of the rules, regulations, and updates that the IHSA gives on the website, which is www.ihsa.org. The next part that Whitney Young offers as far as extracurricular activities are all of the fantastic clubs. This year, all clubs are encouraged to meet and invite students to join. The only difference from the past years is that all clubs have to be virtual. If the student is not exactly sure what they are interested in joining this year, Student Council is currently working on creating a virtual club fair where they can explore all of the clubs that Whitney Young offers. If you want to look at the current list of clubs, you can access them through your mobile ID, which is something every Whitney Young student should have. And with that, our next speaker will be Nova. Hi everyone, so my name is Tova Kaplan. I'm a junior and I hope you're all staying safe and healthy during this time. Um, I'm just gonna talk to you all about academic support and attendance. So obviously this is a very stressful time for a lot of students. Um, students will need a lot of extra support. Um, so we're, we worked with administration to offer different ways that students can be supported. So first of all, for counselors and social workers, they'll be available during off, for office hours during school days for any so, so, you know, social emotional needs or college preparation or anything like that, they'll be available. Um, other staff will meet with students by appointment such as school psychologists. Um, students will be able to sign up for that. Um, as well as the math and writing centers will be open in some capacity. Uh, we're still working out the specifics, but those resources will be available for students who need it. Um, in addition, there'll be student to student tutoring with NHS and student council is also developing a new tutoring program as well for any class um, in the school uh, by students and that will be uh, opening up soon. And then for attendance, um, as mandated by the Illinois State Board of Education, class attendance will be mandatory. Um, so note that that's in contrast to the spring where attendance was um, optional for most of the quarter. But this year it will be mandatory. Uh, teachers will be taking attendance at the beginning of class. Absences and tardies will be counted as they would be in person. However, going along with what Leilani was saying about our empathy pillar, um, we are expecting teachers to be understanding when students have extenuating circumstances. We just ask that students are freely communicating this to their teachers um, whenever, for whatever reason. If you're late, if you can't go, if your internet's not working, if you can't put your camera on, please be as open as possible with your teachers about these reasons. And we're asking teachers to exercise discretion and be accommodating for our students during this time. And with that, I'll pass it on to Sarah Sanchez. Thank you, Tova. Hello, I'm Sarah and I am a senior at Whitney Young. So here we have a list, a short list of general resources that can hopefully be helpful for our Whitney Young families. Firstly, the city of Chicago offers an online interactive map 
that allows users to find free COVID-19 testing sites near them. Next, we wanna make sure that every family has access to the technology needed for remote learning. If you need to borrow a school device, you should contact your school, school counselor to communicate this need. Also, CPS is offering free internet access to families in need through their Chicago Connected program. You can use their eligibility tool to find out if your family is eligible. All you have to do is enter your school ID number and your date of birth. You can find more information on this program at the City of Chicago website. Lastly, we also wanna make sure that all of our families still have access to food during this time. Pandemic EBT SNAP benefits are available for all CPS students. August 31st is the last day to apply, which is today. So if you have not already applied for these benefits and they would be helpful for your family, please apply today. The Greater Chicago Food Depository also has an online map where you can find food programs near you. This includes food banks and pantries. Also, many community-based organizations have created food aid programs for their communities during COVID-19. Among these organizations, Brave Space Alliance operates a mobile crisis food pantry for queer and trans folks on the South Side. They particularly prioritize those who are sick, disabled, quarantined without pay, elderly and undocumented black, brown, or indigenous people. And of course, CPS food sites will be operating as they did last spring for CP CPS Family Food Assistance. With that, I will pass it back to Margot to start our Q&A section. We uh, did not have any questions. Well, we haven't had any questions yet. So if any of yet. <laughs> uh, you, you people watching would like to ask any questions about any of the things covered um, for, the ad for either the administration or for students to answer, feel free to go to this link. Um, we'll give you a couple minutes uh, to ask some questions and then hopefully we'll get some Q&A going. Uh, since there are no live stream is just a little bit delayed about 20 seconds so we won't even get the first response right away so so while while we are waiting um i just had two things i, I want to clarify if a family student needs a device should that person go to mr soto or to their counselor so mr soto i need you to answer that one does the family go to to you or the counselor And maybe, maybe you'll come right back. And then I just want everybody to know that Whitney Young is a distribution site once again. So if you are near Whitney Young or passing by Whitney Young and um, you would like to have or get some food, we will be. Okay, the, the slide just said for um, the students to see the counselor. So I just wanted to make sure we clarified that. So everybody who needs one, uh, please see Mr. Soto during registration. And again, uh, Whitney Young is a food distribution site. Okay. We have some questions rolling in. And the first one is from a student and it's and it's he, uh, he says I do not own a webcam and they are very expensive. How should I attend class with a camera? Mr. Soto. Um, Margo, as soon as he comes back on, then we will um, he's babysitting. So as soon as he comes back on, he can answer the question. Let's take the second question. And Dr. Penner, I do think that he's on the live delay, so he's probably going to answer this moment. Okay. Margo, what was the question? 
Uh, a student asked, they do not own a webcam and they are very expensive. How do I attend class with a camera? For sure. A student asked that they do not have a webcam, so how should they attend class with the camera? Tova can ask the um, next question. Yes, so we got a question asking, how study hall virtually and i'd like to add are we planning on taking attendance for study hall yes we plan on taking attendance for study hall so as soon as school starts we will give uh the students all the information that they need for those that have signed up for study hall or instructional support Uh, we have another question. It says, how will senior experience work this year? And Ms. Harris is on the call, Ms. Harris. She was on the call. So um, senior experience, obviously we're gonna have to manipulate some of it uh, to address the COVID situation, but we are having senior experience. And if you have any questions, please reach out to Ms. Vita Harris, who is our programmer. Uh, and Mr. Swanson, do you have her email address? I'm here, Dr. Kenner. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> I stepped away for a moment. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, senior experience is still going on for those um, whose supervisors replied to me. I have been uh, fielding emails since July from different corporations and organizations who either confirmed senior experiences or said they were not having them because of the COVID situation. So I've talked to all of those students. Uh, anybody else needs to see me as soon as possible because I would like to finalize schedules uh, before school starts on next Tuesday. So my email is V as in victory, K as in kite, Scott, S-C-O-T-T -T dash Harris at cps.edu. There's another question of can clubs meet in person at all while remote learning is going on? And so we had that question today and right now the Board of Education is saying no. But what we're going to do is reach out to the district to share with them what our safety protocols will be with our students who want to meet um, outside of the building. Um, I do know that we have one organization that got permission from each parent. They are not meeting on school grounds, but they got permission from each parent for them to meet um, at, a, at a location for them to study together. So. Um, give us an opportunity to vet that question with the district and we will get back with you. I will say that uh, we initially got information that we were not going to be able to hold registration at Whitney Young. Um, and so we reached out to the district that day to say, these are our protocols. Uh, Mr. Swanson had done a beautiful video of what our protocols would be and they gave an approval within a uh, half an hour so just allow us to reach out to them and then we will get back with you because we do want students to be able to safely interact with each other but the word is safely interact and so we will get back with you with a um, more fluid response Okay, so another question we had, we actually got a lot of questions asking about um, the first day of school. Will teachers be in contact with students ahead of time to send out the Google Meet links or how, what should we expect at the time? Mr. Swanson. Sure, so the Google Meet 
links are going to be created by the district tomorrow, I believe. So students should be able to go into Google Classroom tomorrow and view their Google Classrooms. There should be a link on there with the meets as a default. So certainly your teachers will reach out to you as well, but that's where you can go is uh, classroom.google.com. And we did get that information today from uh, the district. So just look for it. Now, don't wake up in the morning at 7 o'clock and expect it to be there. Give the district a little bit of time to populate uh, those rosters and that information, and you should receive it by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, here's another question. How will studio classes or lab classes be conducted? What about for students who need to use supplies from the school? So your teachers will have all of that information. And like we did uh, for the spring, uh, the teachers, we, we were able to get that those supplies to the students. So please wait until your teacher gives you instructions in terms of supplies and so forth. And if there's a, a possibility that students might have to come to the school to pick up supplies, we will make that available to the students. And Mr. Swanson, Mr. Harris, Mr. Soto, if I'm leaving out anything, please uh, feel free to add. Or if we have some teachers on uh, the call, you may certainly add your input as well. I guess the, the next question, we're receiving um, a lot of questions about counselors and um, what times they'd be able to meet with students and if counselors can meet in person, like with a mask or something. So right now, the office hours for counselors will be from 9 o'clock to 3.15. Uh, I'm not sure what the counselors are, will be comfortable with. Uh, and so we will have to allow them to answer that question um, individually. So right now the counselors have office hours and we don't have any in-person appointments at this time. Um, one thing that's been asked about a lot is the process of documenting an absence. For example, if someone is, you know, had to go to a doctor's appointment or had another engagement, um, would they still have to contact Ms. Overham and go through that whole process with the, you know, email from your parent? Or could you just email the teacher? Like, what, what would be the process for that? And, and that, that is a great question. We did not go over that today. So we will allow Ms. Overham to send some information about how that will look. I don't think she's on the call this evening, um, but that was, that's a great question. And I, as the principal, don't have a response for that. Um, but again, Ms. Overin will craft a response and then we'll get that out right away. Um, another question that I saw a lot was asking about standardized uh, tests. Uh, do we know how those are going to be administered or if they'll be administered at all? Uh, Mr. Harris? Sure. So um, as we receive information uh, from the district, then we will uh, distribute that, that information. Um, so as of right now, the, um, the SAT for seniors um, it's currently scheduled for uh, Wednesday, September 23rd, and more information in, in terms of details uh, and the specifics in, around logistics will be, will be uh, forthcoming. And before Mr. Harris leaves, um, perhaps some of you on the call have not been formally introduced to Mr. Harris. We are thrilled that Mr. Harris is back with us. He is um, one of our three assistant principals. Mr. Harris was the Dean of Whitney Young from 2006 to 2010. Unfortunately, we could not afford him. So he left and became a principal of an elementary school. Uh, he had two other stints with high schools 
And the last one, he was Dean of Faculty at the lab school at the University of Chicago. The students loved him when he was at Whitney Young. Faculty was thrilled that he is coming back. And so I, 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 it's my honor to say we are just ecstatic that you are back with us, Mr. Harris. And Dr. Kenna, I would have to echo that um, and, and take it up 10 times. I'm even more ecstatic to, to, to be back. Um, uh, I, I, I'm just even amazed uh, tonight at the students' presentation in, in, in terms of how well versed and articulate and, and organized and everything. This is the reason why um, I, I decided to be an educator. And so um, I thank you students for renewing my reason uh, for being in education. So I'm excited to be back and looking forward to, to everything and being back in person. Go Dolphins. Mm -hmm. We have uh, multiple students and parents um, requesting that we go over the schedule again. Like people are confused about the um, break times in between like the passing periods and what time like the day starts and ends um, and like just how the an overview of the schedule again. So Charlie, if you could go over the schedule again, please. I will. So here again is our schedule. Um, we have got orange days, blue days like the spring. Um, the day will start uh, at 9 a.m. and end at 3.15 p.m. every day. Um, there will be four classes on orange and blue days. Uh, each of which are 75 minutes long. Um, this year, unlike the spring, each class period will have a minimum time for live instruction. Live instruction being time where you're on a Google Meet, uh, just like this with your teachers and the rest of the students. Um, and it's in real time, not, as not asynchronous. Um, so let's walk through orange days. The first class will be from 9 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. Um, 60 of those minutes will be live. Um, and then before your second period class, you'll have another 15 minutes uh, to uh, those 15 minutes can be used however you like as a, as a short break um, in between classes to relax and get off the computer for a little while. Um, Orange and blue days will have breaks in between for a half hour um, so people can eat lunch. Um, and as I said, flex time at the end of the day. Uh, Dolphin days, all eight class periods will meet. Um, again, it's still from 9 a.m. to 3.15 p.m., except instead of meeting for 75 minutes, each class period will meet for 35 minutes. Um, I guess I can go over the five-day week again, too. Uh, on a five-day week, there will be two orange days, two blue days, um, as well as a dolphin day. Uh, as I mentioned before, normally on Wednesdays. Are there any more specific questions that I can answer about the schedule? Students are asking I'll, how I'll leave it up. Working. Go ahead. Can you just go over how lunch will work? Yeah, so on orange days and blue days, there'll be a 30 minute period um, in between uh, the first two periods of the day and second two periods of the day. Because let's say I might have fifth period lunch, then on orange days where it's only periods one through four, I'd have no time, I, I wouldn't have a lunch break. So on both days, there will be a 30 minute break um, to allow people to eat, eat their lunch um, and have that time for themselves. Um, on your scheduled lunch period that you received on your schedule, um, that will be used for asynchronous time. Uh, so you'll, ha you'll have that time for yourself um, to be used similarly to the flex time. Uh, I have and another then again question. on Dolphin. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, there's another question. Will driver's ed be offered this school year? And I would say the driver's ed in the classroom will, I'm not sure about the driving part, but we will ask our physical education teachers who are teaching that course um, and we will go from there. 
There's a really good question from a parent uh, who asked, what is the best way parent their children in remote learning? Um, Ms. Elamine, could you start off with, with um, responding to that and then I have something and then I'd like the other administrators to weigh in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess when I heard that question, I thought to myself, how am I as a parent? Because I have two children in CPS as well. Um, my older daughter is going into the sixth grade. Um, so one of the things that I'm planning on doing as a parent is um, having a morning meeting with her and an afternoon meeting. So in the morning, I'm going to sit down with her and just, you know, talk to her about what her schedule is, um, what, what assignments are due that day. Um, obviously, my daughter is younger, so I'll spend more time like looking over her planner and making sure she has everything that she needs for the day. And then kind of the same in the same vein in the afternoon, I'll sit down with her, talk about what happen, happened during the day, um, make sure that she wrote down all of her assignments, um, make sure that if there's any supplies that she needs for anything, that we have access to those. Um, in a more general sense, um, we've made sure that both of our daughters have a dedicated workspace um, a, as well as a device so that they have um, a place that they can go to do their work. Um, we're also making sure that we are in communication with the teachers. So I have um, requested access. Um, if you email your child's teacher, sure you can request that they add on Google Classroom. And one of the things that I love about that as a parent is that I get a daily summary or I can get a weekly summary of upcoming assignments um, or missing assignments just so that I can, you know, check in with my kids. Hey, you know, I got an email saying that you have this assignment coming up tomorrow is, do you have everything you need? Are there anything, um, is there anything that I can do to assist you? So I think just making sure that you are um, doing a good job of, providing supplies for your students, um, having conversations about um, is there anything that you can do to assist them, providing them a quiet space uh, whenever possible to work, uh, and then staying in communication with the teacher um, so that if there's anything that you can do to support the teachers um, more specifically, I think would be a great way to help support your child. And I want everybody to know that Ms. Elamine is a social science teacher, uh, one of the best. Um, she is also the senior uh, advisor, so she's over our senior activities. And she was very, very instrumental in pulling uh, this document together with the collaboration of all of the teachers and the eight uh, teachers from yesterday. So, Ms. Elamine, thank you for all that you do. I I'd like to answer that question also. Um, parents, we need you to be a partner in terms of what we are doing. Uh, we need to, you to make sure that your students are up on time, that they are dressed appropriately. I would agree with Ms. Elamine about having a, a, a space in which they can work and not be distracted um, and just support what the teachers are trying to do. Now, if it's way out of the box and you just have some issues, then you certainly can reach out to an administrator and we will try to resolve those issues as quickly as we can. But the word partner to me is important. This is unlike anything that I, I have ever seen in my 64 years. But I would also say this is gonna make us a better country, a better school, a better city, because we all are going to be able to get through with this. But we need everybody working in concert with one another, collaboration with one another, and believing in what we are doing. I need parents to believe or continue to believe in what we're doing as a school. And I feel the love, I feel the support, but I need it from everybody. I, I promise you, we're not doing this um, just to get paid. We do this because we're passionate about our children. I love every single student in this building. Even if I don't know them, they are my responsibility and I am responsible for getting them to college. I'm also responsible for their safety. And I'm not going to do anything ever that is going to distract me from those two things. So please, let's be a partner uh, with what we're trying to do as a school. And again, if there's anything that just doesn't feel right, email me I, or one of us and we promise we will get back to you right away. That, that was a great question. Um, I saw a lot of questions 
that I thought were really interesting to bring up, which was, is there going to be a limit for teachers on what time they'll be allowed to post assignments on Google Classroom? For example, a lot of students wrote about their experiences of having teachers post something really late at night um, with not giving students enough time to complete the assignment. Are there any guidelines that you're planning on creating around and, that? And so let, 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 I'm going to be real clear. I'm going to be real clear about that. That's going to stop. That's not fair to the students. Um, you know, if a student goes to bed at 7.30 and something's posted at 8 o'clock, then they get an F for that. That doesn't make any sense to me. So we're going to make sure that everything is reasonable in terms of what the expectations are for the students. Again, we talked about student expectations uh, and a little bit about teacher expectations. Um, and I want to make sure that teachers are reasonable in terms of what they are asking students to do in this environment. So if there's an issue, and let's not be nitpicky, but if there's an issue, then let us know and we will deal with it right away. I think to add just real quick, just to add to that, um, I think one of one of the one of the pieces that was highlighted in, in the presentation um, under the respect, the pillar of respect that teachers will give frequent feedback, update grades regularly. And then also solicit feedback from students. So, so that's one of the one of the pieces that that the teachers themselves have agreed to do to solicit feedback from students. So, if there are some issues, if there, you know, if, if that does become an issue, then um, there 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 will be a forum uh, set up for with, with that classroom teacher where whereby that student can 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 express that that to them if they're comfortable. If not, then reach out to. Um, uh, in the building that you're comfortable with to, to get that addressed. We have about 11 more minutes until we conclude this presentation. Uh, Sarah, Margo, Tova, are there any more questions that we need to address? Um, one question that we've been getting a lot is uh, with gym classes and dance classes or any classes with physical activity, um, how will that work? Will cameras have to be on? Um, will there have to be the live instruction the whole time? Like, can you just shed some light on that? And so we'll first start off because I'm a physical educator. I majored, majored in physical education in college. So it is physical education, not gym. I'm going to correct you, Tova, and I love you. Um, so we are going to allow the teachers to structure their classes the way that they see fit, but there is going to be live instruction by the physical education teachers. But obviously we will allow them to let the students know what that will look like. Are we doing gym uniforms? Uh, um, At this particular time, we're not, per okay. we're not telling them. Um, but your PE teacher may have some guidance on some um, appropriate attire for PE. That's a great question. I didn't even think about gym clothes. <laughs> okay. We received um, some couple of important logistical questions, um, freshmen and um, seniors. Freshmen asked, um, how are freshmen um, going to like learn um, and interact with um, other classmates and get to know each other because they're new to the school and seniors asked about senior experience. So senior experience, that question was already asked and anyone who has any additional questions on senior experience, please uh, talk to Ms. Harris about that. And then I'm going to rely on this committee for us to have consistent town hall meetings with different grade levels. And maybe we'll have small group um, interactions, maybe division by divisions or something like that. Student council, I'm sure, is going to help us with that. But we're going to do everything we can to make sure that students are interacting with one another and meeting new friends. How that works in a, in a, in a virtual environment is going to be a little challenging, but we're up for the challenge. So I will say that this group is going to coordinate more town hall meetings for each grade level. We're going to start there. And then if we can determine how we can break those up. I know I was in a Zoom, Zoom 
And I know that's not the proper uh, uh, protocol venue that we have, but they were able to have breakout um, rooms for people in on the call. So I don't know if Google Meets is able to do that, but if it is, then perhaps we can do something like that. But this group of students um, will have the challenge of helping us uh, coordinate um, that uh, act or those activities. And uh, just to piggyback off that, it is my understanding that Google Meet will have breakout rooms this upcoming October is the deadline or the, okay. the hopeful date. That's great. Um, um, and again, you guys remember we, we have we have advisory division on Wednesday, so that will be another opportunity for students to get a chance to um, be introduced to each other. So here's another question. Are student transit cards available this year for students when traveling for sport act sport practices and meets and volunteer activities, et cetera? The answer is yes, we do have them available in the main office. If a student needs one, they need to come to the main office between nine and two, Monday through Friday. Um, a lot of students were asking about uh, guidelines for student behavior, if we could get more specifically into that. For example, some students said that they don't have a desk in the room and would it be okay to uh, do learning on their bed? Um, also, what, what are the exact dress code um, expectations and things like that? Also, eating during class, is that allowed or, are te or, or is it like depending on what teacher you have? Uh, eating is not going to be allowed. Uh, we don't allow it uh, in person learning. We're not going to allow it here. Uh, we don't want any students laying on their bed, uh, relaxing while you're in class. So if you don't have a desk and you have to sit on, uh, you have to sit on your bed. We just want it to be appropriate. You guys, we, students, we are preparing you for life beyond Whitney Young. And I know sometimes you guys think she is so anal and and all these negative things, but she, your principal, uh, is preparing you guys for life after Whitney Young. And I promise you, everywhere I've gone, true story, went to Dubai last year, and somebody stopped me and said, because I had a t-shirt on, how are you affiliated with Whitney Young? We know about Whitney Young. Everybody around the world knows about Whitney Young because our students are prepared. So don't think that we're trying to be mean uh, about anything. We're just preparing you for life and a job outside of this uh, situation. So you can't go to a job with your pajamas on. You can't lay down at your job in your bed. So we're not going to allow you to do it uh, when you're in school. We are going to school. And so I think if everybody understands that and the parents and guardians support us with that message, I think we, are, we will be great. We have about um, four more minutes. Margo, maybe we'll take one or two more questions and then um, I have some thank yous to do and then Charlie um, or whoever will close it out. I think it's Charlie. A question that came up a lot was from parents and students was how the 60 minute live instruction is gonna be, is gonna be like lectures or something and what asynchronous learning is and how that'll be utilized like, are the lessons going to be recorded? Like, what's going to um, happen with, with the school, like the school class period itself? And I would say that's going to be up to each individual teacher to determine what it is. So it could be a combination of, um, and, and Ms. Elamine, you might help me. I don't see any other teachers on my screen. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely, Dr. Kenner. I know for me personally, I, I could not imagine myself lecturing for 60 minutes. So one of the things that I'm planning on doing uh, during my live instruction is maybe having small groups, um, have, utilizing breakout rooms, because that's one thing that I do in my classroom. You know, I might um, give a 15 minute mini lecture and then split my class up into groups to work on a project. Um, so I would imagine uh, that many teachers are going to do similar um, 
setups where they might have some small group um, breakout rooms. I know that's one thing that um, we're looking to be trained on this week is how to use utilize breakout rooms and Google Meets. It's one of the professional development sessions that is being offered to uh, teachers at Winnie Young. Um, I, as far as asynchronous learning, I would imagine maybe something along the lines of perhaps there's like a video that you need to watch or maybe there's um, like a Kahoot challenge, um, something that is not going to be face-to-face -face instruction, or perhaps your teachers uh, might ask you to complete um, some work uh, that there might be some guided work that you have to complete. Um, but a, my understanding, uh, the difference between synchronous and asynchronous is synchronous is obviously just live instruction. And asynchronous would be, you know, for example, if there's classwork that needs to be done, your teacher might say, okay, we're done for the day, go ahead on this assignment and make sure that you remember that it's due in three days. Um, um, I can't really speak to it more than that, but that would be my best guess. Okay, Margo, one more question? If we have any? Yeah, what would what will the advisory period be used for and would students be able to be signed out if they wanted to participate in like an extracurricular activity? And we're going to say yes to that. We've not organized that in that fashion at this particular point, but yes to that. We want advisories to be all of the above. Um, and so the teachers will articulate what it will look like as we move towards um, our Wednesdays. And just an FYI, attendance is required in that class period as advisory. So you just like if you're in person, if you need to go meet with a club or council or whatever, you still need to check in with your advisory teacher during that time and then just communicate with them that there is something that you need to do. So at this time, I would like to, um, well, to really apologize to our LSC and our friends of Whitney Young, um, their executive boards, because I didn't give them the presenter link. And so they're out, um, out there, not able to say anything. So thank you so much to the LSC for all that you've done. Ms. Graven, you have been a tremendous president and leader, and we thank you. Friends of Whitney Young, Ms. Chen, as our leader, uh, I'm really excited about working with you and, and being a part of that energy that you have. Um, Ms. Bumble, as always, we love you and we thank you. Uh, and Ms. Cavanaugh, we love you and we thank you uh, for signing to our students today. We really, really appreciate it. And then I, I, I can't say it enough. We were texting back and forth um, and Mr. Harris is just overboard with how well our students did today and how well and how impressed he was with the presentation. Uh, we had seven students, I believe, who presented. We had 13 others who are on this call who did not. But I want to say to all of the students, I'm impressed with your collaboration, your focus, your dedication, uh, and your stick to itiveness uh, to what we had to do um, for this uh, remote learning presentation. I will say to all of the students on this call, there's going to be a whole lot of issues that we are going to address. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of them are going to be difficult. Some of them are going to be controversial. Your principal doesn't mind controversial. The only thing that I ask is that we be respectful and that we come up with some resolutions to what we are concerned about. So I really look forward um, to working with this group of students again. Charlie, if you want to close it out. Yep. Just as Dr. Kenner had some thank yous, I've got, uh, I've got some too. First of all, thank you to the administration and Dr. Kenner for allowing us students to, to be involved in presenting this. Um, thank you to, to the teachers who contributed in making it using their time over the summer. And finally, thank you to all the students in the reopening committee who put their, uh, who, who really worked hard to put this all together in the past couple of days and have been working hard all summer um, to ensure that as we go back to school this fall, uh, it is as productive and successful as possible. Although this situation may not be ideal, um, it's what we have and I urge you all to really make the most of it and to enjoy uh, going back to school and to, to learn as much as you can to take it all in um, because uh, like it or not, this is how we're going to be learning for, for at least the, the, the beginning of this fall. Um, so, so try to make the most of it. Uh, one of the group that I failed to um, thank uh, was the teachers collectively. 
and, and, and everybody on the call, just listen to this last point. You guys, it is so difficult to be a teacher during this time. So you guys, let's make sure that at some point during the school year that we thank them for what they are doing. Just a little note, an email, um, you can't call them, um, but you know, a shout out in class, because it's a hard work and it's just not, they're, they're um, instructing you in class, they, they are preparing uh, for class and then they are grading papers after class. So I believe and I will always believe our administrative team is by far the top administrative team in the world. I believe that. The, even the district acknowledges that. And everybody acknowledges, and this is the honest got truth, some other selective enrollment high schools are saying that our teachers are absolutely phenomenal, and they are. I think we, we have the best faculty and staff that any school could have. So parents, from time to time, just shoot them an email and thank them for all that they do because this is very difficult. You guys remember the pandemic of 1918 started and was over. So the pandemic of 2020 started in March and it will be over, we are hopeful soon and we can continue um, with some semblance of the life that we had once before. I will always say it is my honor to continue to serve as principal of this wonderful school we call Whitney M. Young Magnet High School. Go Dolphins.